Welcome to the Panther Valley Ecumenical Church on this Valentine's Day, the 14th of February. Uh, it is also in the church calendar, Transfiguration Sunday, the Sunday that we remember the story of Jesus taking his disciples up the mountaintop and them witnessing him becoming this shining white glimmering figure, um, a uh, epiphany at the end of the season of epiphany. I'm so grateful that you have chosen to worship with us this morning, and we have much to be grateful for. I do invite you to our Ash Wednesday service, and that is coming up uh, on Wednesday. We have several opportunities for you to worship with us. Uh, we have a contemplative worship at 8.30 in the morning, and at that worship we're going to be talking about soil. From dust we came to dust we go. So we'll be thinking about what dust is and how we are related to soil and dust. And then later in the day uh, at 7 p.m., we have our traditional service with Highlands Presbyterian and as well as with uh, the First Presbyterian Church of Hackettstown. And this year we will be um, worshiping with Highlands on their Zoom. And so the Zoom link it was provided just a few minutes ago uh, in the uh, intro, uh, the prelude of our service today. It can also be uh, found on our website, Facebook, and if you want to call the church, we can give you that ID number and password as well. And then our third opportunity of worshiping with us um, on Ash Wednesday comes in the form of a do-it-yourself worship. And we have this little booklet. And you can follow along. There are prayers. There's descriptions of what Ash Wednesday and Lent is. Um, and then we also have a tattoo that is the sign of the cross that you're welcome to um, put on your head. You dab a little bit of water. You can put it on your hand. You can put it on your cheek. You dab a little water on it, and actually it'll go that way. Um, and then it will come off. And as you are dabbing water, we invite you to remember your baptism um, and that we have been baptized into the life, the self-giving and the death of Jesus our Christ in the hope and knowledge that we too will live a resurrected life. Um, so this is available to you as a download um, on our website, or uh, you may have received it in the mail. Um, but if you haven't and you would like um, some of these tattoos, shout us, shout, give us a shout out at pantherballeychurch@gmail.com, and we will find a way of getting you these tattoos. So Lent will begin on Wednesday, and we also have an exciting Lent planned, a Lent that is all about listening. And listening is something that we will hear about today. So I invite you to take a deep breath, let go of those to-do lists, don't worry about what is happening this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Just slow down together for a time. Let us worship, leaning on prayer, reflection, and sharing the good news with each other. Let us pray. 
Holy One, light of the world, you help us to see and find our way in this time. Open us this day to a vision of the world made all right, so that we might alight our own lives to show forth your reign on earth as it is in heaven. We praise you for your steadfast presence, holding our lives together in love. Amen. We cannot come before God without first bearing our hearts and opening ourselves and telling God what God already knows, uh, our hurts, our mistakes, the ways we have hurt others, the ways we have stumbled, the ways we have been hurt by others, and the ways we have seen others stumble. So I invite you to join with me in our unison prayer for forgiveness. Holy One, we confess that we fear what we do not understand. We are afraid of what comes to an end because we cannot perceive a new beginning. We are afraid of death. We are afraid of the unknown. Sometimes we ignore our fears and sometimes we are immobilized by them. Guide us to hold Guide us, Holy One, into the way of faith. Help us to move forward despite our fears, knowing you are with us. Grant us a curiosity to ask helpful questions and to sit with the answers we receive, or to patiently wait when there are none. May your wisdom help us to comprehend your presence, even when we do not know what lies ahead. Holy One, we may not know first and foremost that you are with us all, always and forever. And you will never leave us or forsake us. For you made us in your image and you delight in us and you love us. In the name of Christ, whom you sent for us and who guides us on, we pray. Amen. So let us come before God, bearing ourselves the ways that we have been hurt or hurt others, the ways we have stumbled or have seen others stumble. Let us open our hearts to God this day. Please join with me in our unison prayer of forgiveness. Holy One, we confess that we fear what we do not understand. We are afraid of what comes to an end because we cannot perceive a new beginning. We are afraid of death. We are afraid of the unknown. Sometimes we ignore our fears and sometimes we are immobilized by them. Guide us, Holy One, into the way of faith. Help us to move forward despite our fears, knowing you are with us. Grant us a curiosity to ask helpful questions and to sit with the answers we receive or to patiently wait when there are none. May your wisdom help us to comprehend your presence even when we do not know what lies ahead. Holy One, may we know first and foremost that we are not alone and that you will never leave us or forsake us. For you made us in your image and you delight in us and you love us. In the name of Christ, whom you sent for us and who guides us on the way, we pray, amen.
Hey there, it's time for the kids message. So I invite you to go call your kids over and we're gonna talk about Valentine's Day. So who's your Valentine today? I wanted to share some of the Valentines that I've had over the years and one year in particular, it was when I was in kindergarten. So I have this special box that holds a lot of my favorite cards in it and I was going through it the other day because I was putting a card in it and I ran into these Valentines. So I have four Valentines here from my time when I was a kindergarten. I Won't Forget You on Valentine's Day is from Eddie D. And Valentine, you're the one for me. You suit me to a T. And this is from Lynn. Be my Valentine. I love this card. And this is from Robbie. And Nancy Delaney gave me, you're driving me to it, pal. Let's be Valentines. And so today we learn who God's Valentine is. Yeah, we're going to read a scripture this morning that um, tells us who God loves amazingly, like immen immensely. So who is God's Valentine? So Peter, James, and John, they go up this mountain with Jesus. And mountains are really special places. And they're hiking up this mountain, and they're hiking up this mountain, and they get to the top of the mountain, and they're talking, and then Jesus starts talking, and suddenly they hear this voice that says, to them, to Peter, James, and John, it says, this is my beloved son. Jesus, Jesus is God's beloved son. And do you know what? Jesus, our God loved Jesus so much, but God loved us even more than Jesus because God gave us Jesus so that Jesus could say to us, you are my beloved. So we all get an amazing Valentine's Day gift in Jesus. So I just want you to know that you are my beloved. You are Jesus's beloved. You are God's beloved. So my question to you this morning is, who are you going to ask to be your Valentine Day today? Valentine today? And if you do ask someone, I hope that you tell them that they are your beloved. All right, see you next week. This morning's scripture reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up to a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. May God add to our understanding of his holy word.
for the ancient people, for the indigenous people, and for mountain climbers. Mountains are very sacred places. Creation stories and folklore and mythologies all have mountains at some place within their story. They are the places of the gods. It is the tallest place on earth where you can almost touch the heavens. And so mountains have always had a mysterious and um, important place in our stories, the stories who help us understand who we are. And today's story, Peter, James, and John have trudged up a mountain with Jesus. They have gone away from their busy lives. They have taken another pause. Last week we had a pause to pray. This week we have a pause to climb up a mountain. And when we get up on the mountain, we are not disappointed because something incredible, amazing, and unbelievable happens. Jesus becomes dazzling white. We see him in all his resurrection glory. And Peter, James, and John are terrified. Wouldn't you be? Wouldn't you be terrified? And so they want to capture the moment. At least Peter does. Because something incredible has happened. Something that is really hard to explain. Something awe-inspiring has happened. So Peter wants to capture the moment. If he had a, if he had a cell phone, he would be taking a picture right now because he can't believe his eyes. He's afraid, but he's amazed. And he's in awe, and he wants to save this memory. He, he wants it to not stop. This is what he means when he says, I want to build three tents. I don't want to stop. This is incredible what I'm seeing. I can't believe my eyes, so let me take a picture. And then this cloud, right? This cloud comes along. Now, clouds are another image that is used in mythologies, in our holy scriptures, in stories, clouds, are things, is, is something that hides something. It's mysterious. Things, when that cloud comes along, it, you can see it, but you can't see it. Clouds are important in our scripture because it is God who hides in the cloud. When the Israelites were fleeing Egypt, God was in the cloud protecting them, protecting the people by day and in the fire of the cloud at night, protecting and giving uh, nourishment um, and just abiding, walking with the Israelites. And so God, once again, on this mysterious mountain with this amazing, awe-inspiring moment, that Peter is having a hard time describing. And Mark, too, is having an incredibly hard time describing this. The cloud overshadows Peter, James, and John and says, this is my beloved, listen to him. Last week, I was watching a documentary on Mount Everest 
and the people who have climbed Mount Everest. And there was some live footage of um, recent, a recent climb just a few years ago. And Mount Everest, of course, is the tallest mountain in the world, and you truly are very close to heaven. You actually need to have oxygen uh, to uh, hike up there. Um, at least if you are to take your time getting up there, um, you need that oxygen. And what struck me about this documentary was the people, all of the people waiting in line to get to the top of the mountain. These folks were literally strung together with rope because it's incredibly dangerous. And the wind and the clouds could come up at any time. And so you could lose your way, you could fall, and unfortunately, you could freeze up there. But it struck me that all these people who wanted to go to the top of Mount Everest were willing to stand in line to get there so that they could then say that they have been there. Now, when you do get to the top, and they gave this photo of the entire panorama, it was amazing. I mean, you could see for miles around. But they mentioned also that that's once or twice a month. And so people would wait in their tents through incredible storms and in incredible cold with incredibly a lack of oxygen, people's bodies were actually aching and, um, and, and they were all at high risk. But they wanted that mountaintop experience. They wanted to be up there. And it made me think of our mountaintop experiences and how we sometimes are willing to wait in line and we have our bucket lists of places that we want to go. And they may not be up on a mountain, but these are places that we just, we desire to go. We want to experience. It could be the ocean. It, it could be a mountain. It could be the desert. It could be Africa, Thailand, Japan. There are many places that we wish and yearn and desire to go. We're willing to stand in line at the airport to get there. But the question I have this morning is do we pause long enough when we do get there to take in and become awestruck by what we see. I have a friend who a few months ago, well actually, yeah, early December, was on business in Thailand. And he got um, quarantined. He, did, he himself did not have COVID-19 but he was unable to come back to England. And so he was quarantined in Thailand. He's worked in Thailand for probably 10 years, and he has never spent time doing nothing in Thailand. He's always been busy going to the plant, working on his project, and going back to London. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, continually back and forth. This quarantine gave him an opportunity to slow down, to take in this gorgeous, beautiful place with people who are incredibly kind and wonderful. And one day, this little lizard came up and crawled up on him, and he said he had the time 
to sit and he let the lizard go on his finger and he sat and he looked at this lizard. And it was so beautiful. He had always just flicked them off him before. And he was overwhelmed and awestruck. And he went, and he did, grabbed his cell phone, took a picture, and sent it to all of us. But he did stop, and he said it was profound for him. He had never taken the time to look at the creatures that lived. He just thought they were pesky hitchhikers. I have another friend, a dear friend, who went away to another country for vacation during COVID. And he was amazed by what he saw. He encountered a people who were so grateful for him to be there, that they went out of their way to do anything that he wanted. Um, and the other thing that happened to him is that he went on safari. And it was just him and, and his, a couple other friends and the people who were the guides. And so it wasn't crowded like it usually is. It was quiet. And the animals came out and they were curious. And one day he had the opportunity to stare into the eyes of another creature, a four-legged creature, a wild creature. And he said it was then and there that he understood that this is God's creation and that they too are made in the image of God and that they too are the beloved of God. And his life has been profoundly changed. I suppose it's one of the good things that COVID has done for us. It's forced us to slow down. It's forced us to find awe and wonder and amazement and, yes, fear in this world, but to feel and to see and to see beyond our busyness, to see beyond the fog, and to hear, to hear God's voice, maybe it's not actual hearing, but to hear it in what we see, slowing down, just being. This mountaintop experience revealed to Peter, James, and John who Jesus was and is God's beloved Son. And we too are asked to pause and look, turn our eyes upon Jesus, turn our eyes upon this world and see the beauty and the brokenness and be awed Put down our phones. Don't worry about our time schedules. To listen and look. On Wednesday, is we will begin our Lenten journey. And that Lenten journey is an opportunity to enter into the cloud, into God's base camp, into God's presence. We're given an opportunity to deepen our relationship with God through Lent because Lent is about listening with our hearts for the prompting of the Spirit. It's about walking together as this beloved community. It is about seeing and hearing our stories, other people's stories, mountaintop stories, valley stories, cloud stories, 
creature stories, indigenous stories, stories that intersect with the greatest story ever told. Lent is about walking with Jesus, and it is about being Jesus being with us throughout the thick and thin, hard and smooth portions of our journey. It's about reaching out our hand and allowing Jesus to raise us up and show us the way to live a life abundant. Lent is a time where we seek out both the mountain and the valley with the assurance that God and Jesus and the Spirit are in the cloud, that mysterious, amazing place, speaking to us, you are my beloved. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the pre-dawn glow that promises yet another new beginning. You are the still dusk that brings rest to a weary world. You are the prophecy of God's life-giving word inscribed on our hearts. You are the law that finds its fulfillment in love. You are the mountain where the presence of God blazes and burns. You are the valley where the face of God peeks out from suffering eyes. You are the glory that we long for, the whispered rumor of a different order, the shining one who transfigures all things. You are the one we worship. Amen and amen. Let us pray for the life of the world. God of justice, we pray for the leaders of this world and this church community. Hear our prayer. Prince of Peace, we pray for those who live in conflict around the world. Secure us in your love. Comforting healer, we pray for all who are experiencing loss and sickness of any kind. Hear our prayer. 
Emmanuel, God with us, we pray for those who are homeless, hungry, and alone. Reassure us in our times of need. God of unity, we pray for those who are excluded, oppressed, and pushed to the margins. Hear our prayer. Transforming spirit, we pray for those who live in comfort, that they may exhibit Christ-like hospitality and generosity. Holy and living one, for those we have named and the ones whose names we do not know, hear our prayer. And now, as the beloved children of God, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now a time of giving thanks for all that God has given us. And we here at PVC are so grateful for your incredible generosity, the ways that you keep giving to this ministry, to keeping the lights on in this church, um, but also providing food and um, comfort to those in our community who are in need of that. We're so grateful. So we give thanks for strong yet tender hands held out in trust and blessing. And where words fall short, let hands speak out the heights of love's expressing. Thank you. To God be the glory for all our gifts, our witness, our service, and our very selves given to God. Amen. And so I invite you now to go with the knowledge that God is holding your life in God's hands. Let us go and hold each other. And know this, God's light shines within you and shines a light forward so that you can see your way on the way. Know that you are never alone, that God is walking right beside you, and know that you too are the beloved son or daughter of God. Go in peace. Amen.